Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net where I teach beginners the skills that they need to get their first software development job building Windows and web apps at the world's best companies as quickly as possible. In our previous lesson, we looked at string manipulation. Uh, often you're going to be working with dates and times in your applications. And so this lesson is going to look at both the basics of working with the date time class as well as doing date time math. Uh, formatting the date time to be represented as a string and much more. So let's get started by creating a new project. We're going to want to make sure that we are working with Visual C Sharp templates. Make sure you're working with the console application template. We're going to call this dates and times. All right. And so I'm going to begin by writing just a very simple application. We'll use this as a launch pad to move forward. So here we go. Okay, so I'm betting that you could probably figure out what's going to be output here whenever we run this application. Uh, first of all, I'm using a class called DateTime. I'm actually creating a new instance of DateTime called my value. And then I initialize my new DateTime class instance to DateTime.now. Now is a static property that will just return the current date and time. Awesome. And now that I have a object of type date time, I can call its two string method to simply print it to screen. Uh, the default, no fancy formatting, just want to take the date and time and print it out in a console window. So let's go ahead and run the application. And as you can see, uh, it is the result of date time dot two string, just gives us the full date and, uh, and time. So, uh, the, uh, the date time class actually gives us quite a few ways to format uh, helper methods to format the string. So let's just look at a few of these really quick. Um, in fact, I'll go through all the major ones, uh, my value. And so all these two whatever string methods, helper methods for the date time class, uh, give us some interesting formatting. Already looked at two string, gives us the entire thing. We can also do a uh, two uh, short date string, which I use often, and this will just return uh, the current date. So just the date part, not the time. And uh, you'll also notice here that uh, um, that this is localized to the United States date format. Now, if you live in different parts of the world, you're likely going to see a day slash month slash year formatting instead. So .NET will utilize the settings on your computer to accurately represent dates or as we've seen previously monetary values uh, and, and even other data uh, formatting differences between locales. Okay, So let's go ahead and take a look at the corollary to this which is console.writeline my oops, my value dot two short time string and so we see just the time part awesome 315 in the afternoon great now console.write line uh, my value dot two long date string all right let's see what we get there so here we get it nicely formatted and printed out Monday, December 30th, 2013. Okay, And let's see uh, the time version of this as well. Console.writeline my value dot two long time string. And we will see not only the hours and minutes, but also the seconds. That's really the only difference there. Okay. Okay. So in addition to formatting how uh, the date time is displayed as a string, we can also modify dates by performing what I call date math. All right. I'm not sure if everybody calls it that, but essentially we can add and subtract days, hours, months, 
years, okay, pretty much any part of the date we can add or subtract values to and from it, okay? So let's go ahead um, and do the following here and just take a look at my value and what we can do if you take a look at the very top here there's an add days add hours add milliseconds add minutes add months add seconds add ticks all right uh, add years and so on great so uh, let's basically just do something simple and so we're gonna do an add days and we'll just add three days and then I'll just call it to uh, to long date string all right like so now let's see what it will look like three days from now three days from now will be Thursday January 2nd 2014 and I can vouch for the dotnet framework that is indeed going to be the date in three days all right so let's move on and uh, the next thing that we'll want to do is uh, uh, well, first of all, let me point something out that hopefully you saw and I didn't really say much about it is that uh, you can often chain together multiple methods to save a considerable amount of typing. We've already talked about this, right? So all you need to do is just be aware of the data type that's being returned by each of the helper methods. In this case, what's being returned from add days? Well, if we hover our mouse cursor over it, we can see what's being returned from the add days method is a new date time a new instance of date time. Uh, and so once that's returned, then I can use that and operate on that by calling the too long date string. All right. So just be aware of the data type that's being returned by each method in the chain in order to get the desired results. And uh, you can see as I was typing that IntelliSense really plays a big role in this. And you will often uh, see this style of, uh, of coding whenever you're writing applications or looking at somebody else's code because it's so compact. Let's take a look at another example of this uh, just to kind of drive this home. Console.WriteLine, my value add hours, we'll add three hours to it, and then to short time string. And let's see, when we run this, you can see that it's about uh, three hours from now will be about 6.20 in the afternoon. Very good. So uh, this technique of chaining the results of a previous method call and using it as the input for a second and subsequent method call is popular in .NET and it's popular in programming at large. It makes the statement more human readable and more compact. All right. So back to the date math operations. Uh, what if you need to subtract hours or years or whatever the case might be? Well, you can simply do something like this. So console dot right line uh, add days. Whoops, my value dot add days. And then I'm just going to use negative three. And that will allow us to subtract three days. And then we'll just do a two short string like so awesome all right three days ago it was indeed the 27th all right and so next let's talk about helper methods that'll allow you to retrieve certain parts of the date or time and so by this I mean that you can just grab off console dot right line uh, my value and I want to grab just the month and display that in a string all right, and again, this will be just the number, 12 December, okay? Uh, however, that this sometimes is helpful whenever you're trying to do some more uh, complex math, uh, and uh, we're gonna show you how to determine the time between two, um, two points in time, but there might be instances where you need to work with big chunks of time at, at one time and work at a high level rather than at such a low level, so I could just see the number of months that have elapsed by comparing two times grabbing the first time, date times month and the second date times month and then doing a subtraction or whatever the case might be. Okay, great. Notice that before we leave this idea of grabbing different parts of the current date time that we can grab things like, oh, the day of the week, which would be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on. The day of the year so in other words, if today were December 9th, I happen to know that that's the 343rd day of the year, okay? 
and then other things like obviously the hour, um, let's see, the day, the minute, month, second, and so on. Okay. I think the end of year. Great. Okay. All right. So let's talk about creating and initializing date objects. We saw how to do that here at the very outset where we actually set it to date time dot now that created a new instance of the date time class and initialized it to write the second whenever your application is executing. All right. Uh, uh, the first way is through an overloaded constructor instead of doing it the way that we did it here. So let's go ahead and just go uh, date time my birthday equals new date time and then there are a number of overloaded constructors now we've not talked about this idea yet we'll talk about it here in a couple of lessons but just know that i can pass in some date at the time that i'm creating a new instance of the date time uh, for example i can just pass in the year the month and the day like so and then console.writeLine, uh, whoops, my birthday, dot two, uh, short date string. And so let's run that. All right. And so this, you'll say, well, all we did was just give it a string and it just spit it back out. However, what we gave it was, a, was just the numbers and it converted those integer values into a date time that now allows us to work with that data type and all that implies with its uh, add hours, add minutes, add days, add months, the, all the two, whatever, string, formatting, and, and so on. All right, so that's the first way to create an instance of a new date is to pass it a, uh, a series of integers. The other way to do it is like so. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and flesh out this example uh, so that you can see uh, how to compare two different dates. So I'm going to determine the difference between two date time objects. That difference requires a different type of object called a time span. Uh, it's not a date time, but it does represent the amount of time between two specific points in time. Okay, So how much has elapsed between any two dates in time? So uh, what I want to use is the subtract method in order to get, uh, in order to determine the amount of time between now and my birthday when I was born, uh, lo those many years ago, in order to de determine exactly how long I've lived on Earth. Okay, so it's simple. All we need to do is this. Uh, first, we'll start by creating a new instance of my uh, date and time called my birthday equals date time and so the first method we used was by passing in something to the constructor in this case I'm going to call the the built-in parse method of date and time and pass it in a literal string in order to get a, uh, a date time that represents December 7 1969 all right so now time span this will tell us the difference between two periods of time and we're going to call this my age equals date time dot now dot subtract and uh, we'll send in my birthday. All right. So we'll take now, which brings gives us back a date time object, and we'll call subtract, which will return back, as you can see in IntelliSense, a time span object. Awesome. And now, once we use the subtract method of time span to uh, of the date time to get a time span, then we can simply go right line and we go my age. And now we look at the various ways to uh, to format a, uh, a time span object. So we can do a two string, but more interestingly is total days. And you can see in IntelliSense it says it gets the value of the current system.time span structure expressed in whole and fractional days. So this will tell me how many days as well as hours, minutes, seconds, using a fractional day, okay, uh, that I've been alive, assuming that, you know, I started on midnight, I was born on midnight, which I wasn't. Uh, so total days, and now we want to print that off the screen. Oh, we already did, great, there we go. All right, 
So 16,094 and some odd days that I've been alive. And man, I'm, I'm feeling pretty old. <laughs> I've wasted most of those. All right, so, but I could use some combination of properties and methods on the time span object to determine exactly how that translates into years, months, and days, given the possibility of leap years and so on. All right. All right, so there's a lot that we didn't cover. I mean, you saw that long list of, of methods and properties available in IntelliSense that we didn't even talk about. But I felt that the ones we did look at, uh, they were common uses of the date time and time span objects. And I'll give you the same encouragement that uh, I gave you at the end of the previous lesson. If you find yourself writing a lot of code to manipulate dates and times, then you might want to stop Look through MSDN or search online because chances are the .NET Framework Base Class Library has something for you already built into it, okay? So writing applications involves working with data, and we've learned in this lesson and the previous lessons that the .NET uh, Framework Base Class Library can help you with all types of manipulations on all types of data, uh, simple types that we've seen so far. So beginning in the next lesson, we're going to talk about custom complex types. Uh, and we'll look at that and we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.